Hello, my precious ones. I am back. And my 33-day water fast video is right here. Bear with me as I get used to all this setting. Let me see if this light will make it better. It's too bright. Okay. I borrowed a friend's office to do this. So quiet here. So my 33-day water fast. Where do I start? Um, first of all, I had planned to do a 21 day water fast because my 14 my 11 day turned into 14 days and i decided i am going to go for 21 you know i was pretty comfortable confident with it i after after fasting nine days uh in 2017 no in 2018 uh 2016 sorry i fasted uh, my, my my fast of nine days somehow some way purged something from my body and I was able after that to fast very comfortably with almost no symptoms. It was pretty, pretty easy for me. But my first few, few uh, water fast, like the three day, the five day, were a lot harder, you know, much harder. So where do I start? I was in Japan when I decided to do the 21 day water fast. I've had it in my head for a long time during my trip. I was in Thailand for one month. I was in uh, Malaysia, Indonesia. I traveled a little bit and then I ate so much, <laughs> not in quantity, but in, in diversity of food. And I've tried so many uh, beautiful foods that I felt ready. I said to myself, you know, I'm pretty ready to do a 21 day fast. So I started in Japan. I broke my fast four times in Japan. Started, broke it. Sushi is so delicious. I stayed in Hokkaido for uh, over a month and a half. It was so beautiful. Everything was so fresh, so lovely. Uh, you've seen my pictures probably on Instagram. I really, really enjoyed uh, my trip to Japan. It was the first time I'm in Japan and I, I had planned to stay four days, ended up staying two months. So, broke my fast four times in Japan. Went to Korea. I had planned to stay two weeks and I ate Korean barbecue, which is one of my favorite foods. If you follow me, you'll know that. And then I, I thought I was ready. I attempted to fast three times, broke my fast three times. And the last attempt stuck. So I began my, tw my, 21, my supposedly 21 day water fast that turned into 33 days. I began in Korea. And I had to fly from Korea to uh, Manila, Philippines, because I thought I could extend my trip in Korea, but it was snowing. It was very cold. And for some reason, snow and cold um, gives you desire to eat more than anything else. Also, Korea doesn't have Google Maps because I think all the conflict they have with North Korea, you can't really walk with your phone. So you'll get lost. And I needed to walk because when I fast, I am so hyperactive because, you know, you don't you don't digest food. So your body wants to to walk and, and, and go and do things. I couldn't walk. <clears throat> I would walk, 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 and then I end up being lost. It doesn't it, they don't have Google Maps, unfortunately. So I had to catch a flight and go to the Philippines. And someone told me about Boracay Island. And that's where I thought I'm going to do the rest of the fast. Uh, I had to go to Manila first. And then from Manila, I, I caught a flight to Boracay Island. Um, in Manila, I stayed three days. It was horrible. Not because of Manila. Well, Manila is a busy city and it's very crowded. And uh, it didn't work for me. And food everywhere. So I, I stayed in the apartment that I rented. And I couldn't. I really had a terrible, terrible time in Manila. I had already fasted two or three days in Korea, Manila another three days. So I was on day six, day seven. I couldn't walk much, too much food smell in the street. And But you know, Manila is beautiful if you're eating, <laughs> not when you're fasting. And then I went to uh, Boracay and that's when there was the sunshine, the sand, the beach, and that was day seven of my water fast so um, the weather was beautiful and I decided to stay by the beach I rented a small apartment rent is very very cheap in Boracay I think I paid $300 for one month 
I stayed there for two months almost. So month, two months, almost two months. So I paid three hundred dollars only for a rent for a whole house with a bathroom, a bedroom, a balcony right in front of the water, literally ten steps from the water from the beach. Gorgeous place. Uh, I decided I'm gonna fast with Avion water because the water in uh, Philippines is really bad uh, because it's an island they don't have a filtration system and all that so it's not advisable to uh, drink water uh, from the tap so I did get Avion water and I decided not to get the whole boxes of water I decided to just go to the store every um, every every day and to to make myself walk and get the bottle of water every on a daily basis the store was about 10 minutes away from the uh, apartment beach house and it was great to walk every day force myself to walk to get the water so how much water did i drink uh during my fast i drank at the beginning almost a liter and as my fast progressed uh, towards day 20, 21, 17, something like that, my consumption of, of water went really, really down uh, until it reached one bottle, one liter per three days. So I wasn't consuming much. Your body doesn't need much water. You produce your own saliva. You swim in the ocean. The minerals get in your skin. The sunlight gives you vitamins and minerals. And your body gets to this homeostasis that you really don't need much water during the fast. Also, I did feel dehydrated. I was in the sun a lot, almost the whole day, except for the, the, the hours that I was resting at home. And I got dehydrated. So this is the rock that I used. Ooh, it's too bright. Let me see if I can remove the... Yep, there you go. This is the, the, the stone, the Himalayan... Um, salt that i was licking on a daily basis you know minerals are important for the body when you fast and you can get them all from uh, rock salt uh, you don't really need to do anything special or take supplements or vitamins because the body doesn't really need much uh, like i said your skin becomes incredibly capturing of it, it captures something in in in, in, in the air and it makes you it just get you get to this balance i think because we as human beings we never had so much food we always had little famine here and there so humans are used to not eat for many many months or maybe not eat at all i don't know we're just exploring human dimension i don't know if you've heard of inedia but that's people living off of nothing and i i, I believe in it because i know myself when i was fasting I there was a point where you get to this beautiful uh, level of balance that you really don't feel like you need much so I would lick the salt um, every two days some days twice a day and I will drink a glass of water after it to distribute the minerals and I put a little piece under my tongue when I feel dehydrated because like I already posted in several of my Instagram posts water does not hydrate water is only a carrier of minerals what hydrates is salt so salt is very very important and it's the most important thing you need to to, to have during a long a long fast that's over 11 days okay so activity i put i put some notes here i'm going to talk to you about a little bit about everything but nothing close to what i have written on my book because otherwise it would take me six hours to go through all this and i don't want to make this video very long but hopefully i'll be able to publish my book my book and you can buy it and you can read everything there are also things that i can't say on youtube that i'm saying in my book because you know it's we don't have a lot of freedom of speech on 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 uh, youtube there are certain things we can't say but you will read them in my book and then there's other things that I can't say even in the book <laughs> that hopefully I will be able to say if I ever do seminars or things that uh, I can speak to people directly. So activity. I have been very, very hyperactive during my fast. Uh, I was walking roughly five kilometers to seven kilometers minimum daily. Some days I walk double that, 14 kilometers. Some days I walk 10 kilometers. 
But there was one or two days I didn't walk and I felt horrible. My body was like going into hibernation. I was like laying in my hammock. By the way, I never use a bed when I'm uh, fasting because I feel it's too much pressure points on the body and you have to keep turning and twisting. What? But when I do a hammock, I'm always, I sleep in the hammock. I, uh, I'm always cradled in a way that I feel like I'm in a womb. Anyways, you have to study um, hammocks. I've actually give up, gave up my bed in 2009 and I haven't slept in a bed since then, except for the times that I'm, I don't have a hammock available. So when I travel, uh, most of the times uh, I sleep in a bed uh, or on the floor, but my sleeping, um, official sleeping way is a hammock. I sleep in a hammock. It's wonderful. The, when you sleep in a hammock, you don't sleep like a banana. Most people think you do. You don't. You can sleep completely straight. You just have to know how to lay on a hammock. You have to learn about it. Okay. So I have been in a hammock, and uh, the days that I didn't uh, walk, it was two days probably. I felt terrible. My body. I felt like my heart was gonna stop. It just went. I think humans can hibernate. <laughs> Uh, my body would go into hibernation mode and then my heartbeat would go incredibly low and it kind of scared me. I don't know. I, I still was feeling all right and fine, but it didn't, I, I was, I don't know what it was, but I felt like I was afraid that my heart would stop beating, <laughs> but it never stopped beating, of course. So, uh, I have to tell you that Fasting turns you from a human doing to a human being. Because when we eat every day, what we're doing is we're just trying to expand that energy. And what we end up doing is doing a lot of things. You become, a, you are a human doing when you are not fasting. When you fast, you become more of a human being. You start being more. So you don't have that disturbance from food. And what you do is you contemplate more. You think more. You are uh, a lot more, you go more inwards and there's this peace that comes upon you that's uh, indescribable. We're not talking about small fasts. We're talking about extended fasts from 11 days on or, or more. Nine, nine days, 11 days, you start feeling this peace. It is a spiritual peace. Um, I try not to mix uh, religion with my channel because everyone has their own religion. I have religions of all all types of followers, Christians, Catholics, Muslims, Buddhists. I have even Jainists following me that write me. So um, I think that you can interpret it in different ways. Everyone has the freedom and the right to believe whatever they want. But there is a certain spirituality that comes upon you. And you start becoming more spiritual. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. But you become more um, contemplative, more, there is a vibration in the universe. Let's call it the force to keep all religion, uh, religions um, um, equal. Uh, there is a force that starts communicating with you. And that force will, first of all, give you, uh, takes away all the worry, number one. So all your worry goes away. I went fasting because I have certain things I'm doing uh, this year and I, I have difficulties with my life. I have problems like everyone else. But when you fast, the first thing that comes up, uh, upon you spiritually is the peace. There is a peace that only fasters will know what it is. Uh, it did come uh, to me once when I was doing the ketogenic diet, but then I lost it. I don't know how, even though I stayed keto. I, I was keto for over almost two years, hardcore keto. I didn't, some days I didn't eat carbs at all. So you you get it, but then you lose it. It's, it's amazing. But when you fast, you don't lose it. It's just this amazing, if nothing, you have to try fasting if you can. Obviously, I'm not a doctor. Please consult with your uh, professional uh, care provider. Trying fasting will let you understand uh, this piece. Uh, it doesn't come in any other way besides ketogenic diet. I think the carbs are so disturbing and sugars to the body that we end up uh, thinking that that is the standard uh, way we need to feel. 
that is not the standard way. Uh, the ketogenic diet brings you closer to that feeling, but you do lose it with the ketogenic diet. But with fasting, you stay in that spiritual modality constantly until you end your fast. So uh, you do become a human being and you stop being a human doing. Uh, salt. I did lick too much salt certain times, certain days, thinking that I was towards after day 27, I felt some sort of uh, the fast was getting too much for me. So I did continue day 29. I started feeling some sort of dehydration and no need for water. My body didn't want to have any water. I vomited water twice and I was a little concerned and I didn't know, but I felt good. I just felt this feeling of dehydration, but I was in the sun for so much. Like literally my face was completely wrinkled. I looked, I'm going to post a picture uh, of me during the hardest part of my fast. I swear, if you look at the photo, I look like I'm 80 years old. But I didn't care because I was on a mission and I knew that my body needed to dry out before it, it expands again. Because drying the body and exposing yourself to the sun and fasting, especially if you're a beginner faster within the first five years, you're getting rid of a lot of bad bacteria. Bad bacteria loves water. That's the pathway for them to transfer from one place to another. If there is no water in your body or you shrink the amount of water in your body, the bacteria dies, has no way to travel. So you have to kill yourself a little to kill them completely. And there are levels of bacteria that starts dying, the bad bacteria, that you never regain again until probably years. Because I see myself right now, my choice of food has changed tremendously. But let's talk about that at the end. So some days I did lick too much salt and my body was telling me. And I drank more water, more water. And then towards day 29, I vomited water. And that's where I started becoming concerned. And then I literally was getting too tired. And then I my brain started thinking about food. So there is certain uh, signal that will tell you when you need to end your fast. Even though I felt that way, I continued four or five days after the 29 days. And uh, some people will say it's a mistake, but I knew that I could. And then day 33, I, I had to break my fast, but we'll talk about that at the end. So you have to trust your body. An important point. A lot of us don't know. We don't have gurus to teach us. We don't have uh, uh, ma uh, like mass uh, masters. Uh, anyways, so you need a teacher in your life. Uh, right now, there are not a lot of books about fasting. Most of the knowledge I have about fasting came from books that are very, very old. Manuscripts. I was in London uh, last year, was it? The, the, no, the year, the year before. I spent last year, um, New Year in, uh, in Tokyo. The year previous to that, I spent New Year. I spent like 15 days in London and I went to the British Library and I read a lot of manuscripts. So I don't know if you know, but I speak five languages. One of the languages I speak is Arabic. I studied uh, literary Arabic uh, at the university in Spain. And I also have a background from uh, Morocco and Moroccan heritage and part of my family. Uh, uh, we speak Arabic. So I did uh, read some manuscripts written in Arabic of very, very ancient knowledge about fasting. Uh, uh, Hippocrates was a huge, uh, he's the father of medicine. He's huge about, um, on fasting. There were some manuscripts uh, about him and I read. Uh, it's not a lot of information. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of books. So that's why I want to release this book. It's so important. You'll, you'll really, really understand fasting inside and out. You'll get the right advice because I've made so many mistakes and I learned from them. And I'm also continuing on a beautiful journey for fasting. So you have to trust your body. Your body will speak to you while fasting more than when you are eating because you are so pure and you don't have those disturbance uh, waves inside your system. So you really communicate clearly with your higher being, whatever you want to call it, God or 
wh wh whichever religion you, f you follow. So fasting and working. I tried to not do a lot of work except for writing. I wasn't inspired at the beginning, but after day five, six, seven, I started becoming really inspired and I started writing my book. I was writing, I don't know, probably 30, 40 pages a day. That's how much I was able to write. I type pretty fast too on the computer. So, very important. This is something I've done almost every day during my fast. And I highly recommend you doing it if you're going to be embarking on a long fast. Cleansing. I brought a piece of cloth with me from Africa that I purchased. It's very hard, very exfoliating. And I was exfoliating my skin at least once a day and tons of dead skin came off. Especially I was exposing myself to the sun for at least two to three hours daily. And I was swimming at least five to, to eight times every day. I wasn't really actively swimming, but I would go inside the water and I would sit in the water. It was just beautiful. And I felt like I had a meal, you know, because with the sun and all the beautiful water and there was a lot of algae. All of a sudden, uh, when I arrived there, there was no algae, but, but there was a point after 20 days of being in Boracay, some algae came and then little babies, a baby fish started being born on the shore. It was just incredible. And I would go inside the algae and I felt so, mi so much minerals and it was warmer because the algae is dark. So it attracted the sun more and it was just beautiful, <laughs> magical. So cleansing, I cleansed once a day minimum scrubbing so i would go inside the tub i would fill the tub with the water uh, and then i will uh, make the water really hot and then when the skin absorbs enough heat it starts releasing that skin and i would scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub and i would put um a little salt sometimes sometimes i didn't and it was incredible i literally had pounds <laughs> I know it sounds disgusting, but pounds of dead skin coming off of me on a daily basis. And it was dark, probably because of the sun. I was getting tan, but I, I exfoliated so much. I, I couldn't believe that that much stuff was coming out of my body. So one of the worst things that happened to me during my fast is the smell. Good, good God. Anyways. There was so much smell coming out of my body after day 21. I didn't know what was. It was not organic smell. It was petrochemical smell. It smelled like burnt plastic or, I don't know, uh, petroleum or something like that. We live in a petrochemical world. We're surrounded by plastic, by synthetic stuff. So I think our body, our, our pores, we underestimate how much goes in through our pores uh, and how much you can absorb through your pores and how much you can release through your pores. The pores, I think, become so important more. Well, they replace the mouth when you are fasting. So there was so much toxicity coming out and there was so much uh, smell coming out. I couldn't, like some nights I had to put a piece of, uh, because it was hot in Boracay, so I didn't cover myself at night. But I would put a piece of a uh, sheet and I would drop little drops of lavender or eucalyptus so I don't smell my body, my body smell. It was just insane. And that's what encouraged me to continue because on day 21 or 22, I just... But also, remember, you become very sensitive to smell. So... I was, my house, my little apartment was on top of a restaurant. Oh my God, it was terrible. I had to close the windows because sometimes when they cook, I couldn't, I had to go and leave the place or close the windows really well and put some incense so I don't smell the food. You become a hundred times more smelling of things. So my body was releasing this extreme, terrible smell that probably other people didn't smell, but I, cause I was able to smell it. That's what made me feel good about my fast. And I knew I had to continue until the smell stopped. But even though the 33 days arrived and I, could, I, I couldn't continue any further, but the smell was still coming out even on day 33, which means I have to fast more. So black tar, I was spitting 
So my, my tongue on day 21 started releasing some, I would brush my teeth with just coconut oil and a brush almost five, six times a day. And at some point at day 21, 22 or 23, I don't remember, I started seeing black stuff like shavings of metal and it smelled metallic and my tongue I didn't really see the color what a lot of people talk about tongue color changing I don't think I had that I didn't have a white tongue at, at any point so I was spitting after brushing black shavings of metal I think unbelievable I was feeling like a robot at some point okay now I I there there's so much stuff I I just can't I can't really tell you everything in this video, unfortunately. So you have to help me buy my book. I'm going to make it really affordable and cheap so everyone can buy it. And I'm going to self-publish it. And I'm probably going to edit it myself, although I'm not really good at it. But you're going to forgive me. Maybe I'll publish a better version eventually, officially. But I want this information to come to you. And you have to, to really read everything about this fast. Okay. So these are my... Uh, my... Oops, can't see. Uh, you can see a little bit. Chemistry. I did two blood tests and urine tests during my fast. On day 21 and on day 33. Day 33, I went crawling to the clinic because I was so done with the fast. I had to, well, I hired a guy that was, I met at the beach. He was selling Jesus figurines. And I was just, he just smiled and started talking to me. His name is Jay. Hello, Jay, if you watch this video. <laughs> He's such a sweetheart. He took care of me and was checking on me because my family was so worried. And I told him that I had him. It was kind of really, not really hiring, but it was an understanding between the two. He did me a favor and I did other favors to him. But uh, he was so nice and he took care of me. He was calling me every day, four or five times. He would come and spend uh, the night uh, from uh, 6 p.m. until midnight. He would, he would go home. He would make sure I'm, I'm fine. So it was, it was nice to have a human being caring for me. And uh, he also took me to the clinic both times just because, you know, I'm a beginner. I've never done a, such a long-term fast. So I, I, as I become more of a professional, I will probably be able to care for myself. But because, you know, you're in a strange country you don't know people you don't have no family no friends my cell phone was literally useless i couldn't call anyone but he really really was so nice thank you jay for helping me with my fast without you i wouldn't have been able to do this so when i get to the clinic the doctor asks me when was the last meal you had <laughs> i was gonna say 21 days ago so i didn't want to scare him i said oh last night I oops that's my phone Anyway, so I'm going to tell you the things that are not, that are abnormal by modern, modern medicine standards. Uh, pretty much cre creatinine, uh, supposed to be under 80. I had 128. Uh, uric acid, uric acid is uh, up in the roof. I'm supposed to have under 350. I have 721. Uh, but of course, we cannot compare this to a regular eating human being. So your body does things very, very strange, very unique. And you'll never, I think modern medicine is never going to study a fasted human being because nobody has interest in you not buying food. Food is, moves mountains. It's the fuel for society and all the food companies. And... Uh, I don't think there will be a day on our on our planet where we will see modern medicine promoting uh, the mainstream modern medicine because there are clinics for for water fasting but modern medicine will never approve this and they will they will tell you this is terrible this is bad so you have to follow your instinct i had uh, h b a 1 c is normal potassium ah normal potassium Calcium, normal. Yeah, what is the stuff that was abnormal? Ah, the abnormal stuff was protein in the urine. They say if you have protein in the urine, you're about to die. 
I didn't die. <laughs> I had a lot of protein in the urine. Well, in this one, it says trace. Can you see? Ugh. Let's see. Let's adjust. Uh, it says trace protein. And then you can see here, my ketones are ketones four plus, more than four, leukocytes was one plus so those are the abnormal they mark um see mm -hmm. they mark ketones as ugh, this camera is going crazy sorry it's too bright sorry about that i will try to edit this video before i upload it uh bilirubin negative uh euro billy no, Jen, sorry, I don't know much about the science stuff. Normal. Sugar negative, of course. Uh, bacteria, many. <laughs> a lot of bacteria. God, this is urine. So a lot of bacteria in my urine. Of course, they're all out of here, out of this body. Epithelial cells, few. Mucus threads, many. Amorphous urates, few uh you can you can tell that this is not your regular eating human being um test results this that was day february 17th uh february 17th yeah and this one is march 2nd this is my 33 33rd day i had Less HbA1c, potassium went down, and uric acid. No, oh, they didn't put the uric acid in this one. Creatinine. <gasps> what? Oh no, it went down from 128 to 92. So things started normalizing at day 33. FBS 4.9, it went up almost double. Cholesterol went down from 6.3 to 5.8. HDL and LDL. LDL went down from 3.91 to 2.8. HDL was 1.67 and became 2.02. Triglycerides were 1.68 and they ended up being 2.3. What else, what else, what else? I will post these in my book. You can read everything in detail. Uh, hematology. <laughs> what do we have here? Hematology, lymph, midgrain. What is this? I have no clue what this is. Anyways, so RBC, RBC, platelets the same we did change uh let's see urine urine uh ketones four plus leukocytes three plus it went up tripled uh, protein trace and protein plus plus i started releasing a lot more protein in my urine by day 33 wow this is weird wbc microscopic i don't know what this is but i'm reading for you in case you understand all this it went from three to six to 20 to 25 i have no idea what this is rbc one one to two bacteria many epithelial cells few mucus threads it went from many to abundant amorphous urates few few same thing Fine granular, granular cast. 42,000. I don't know what this is. But color of the urine. Straw? Straw. Must be strawberry. Transparency. Hazy. It went from slightly hazy to hazy. Uh, pH reaction. Six. Same, same. Specific gravity. 1.025. Same, same. Okay. <clears throat> this is all I have here. I didn't find much um, explanation about this. I just did the standard 
uh, analysis just because I wanted to keep record. But day 21, I was fine. Day 33, I got to that clinic feeling. <laughs> I just wanted to get there, get out, and go eat. And funny enough, when I got home, I didn't even eat because you, you just can't eat after 33 days of not eating. So breaking my fast, I was supposed to break it at day 21. I felt fabulous and continued until day 27. At day 27, I thought I had to do 40 day fast because I was feeling fantastic. And, and the stuff was coming out and the smell, I said, I am not stopping. I've gone through so much uh, trouble to get here. And this is my only chance because I rented this place for two months. I'm like, I'm doing a 40 day fast. But listen to this, very interesting. When I got to day 33, I knew beyond the shadow of doubt that I needed to break my fast because my body would not take any more water. I started not being able to sleep at all. And something, you know, things come to your brain and, and, and you start thinking about things you've never thought of. I thought I don't have an appendix. And I've always asked myself, what is, uh, what is the role of the appendix? If you really think about it, the doctors will tell you, oh, this is an appendage from uh, ancient beings. We don't need it in modern day. It could be true because modern day people don't fast. Uh, 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 ancient humans used to fast a lot because of famine and not having any food and hunger. So I think it could be a little pouch that kept keeps a sample of the microbiome. And after an extended extreme fast, maybe humans were, were fasting two months or three months uh, and, and the bacteria all flushes up from your gut. That little pouch could be where the sample of your uh, microbiome because without your microbiome you can't digest food did you know that of course it is the little bacteria activity that eats the stuff and there's like some for for um uh for for sugar some for fat they digest fat some different things digest different foods and i felt i said to myself maybe humans that don't have an appendix like me i had an appendectomy at uh, when i was 23, 24 years old, I think we might, the body might have been telling me, you got to eat because you're going to lose all those bacteria. You got to feed them. So what happened was it just dawned on me and I was going to contact a, key, a couple of people that I know fasted 40 days and 50 days, but I didn't have the time. And I, I am curious. So if you watch this and you have fasted 40 days, let me know if you have your appendix or you don't have it. Because I have a suspicion people that can fast 40 days might have their appendix. I don't have mine. They took it away because it got inflamed once and I had to go to the hospital. I was living in Spain back then. So, uh, I broke my fast at day 33. It was probably the hardest thing I've done in my life. Uh, I went and bought cabbage and I needed the meat. My, my body was telling me meat, meat, meat. But I didn't eat the meat. I boiled the meat there is a, a special dish that they cook in uh, philippines delicious called it's a soup called bulalo and i was craving bulalo because i was seeing everyone eating it in the island and i did my own version and uh, i boiled the meat for 24 hours and then i put the cabbage in it and they put a little salt and the next day i had a little bit of it maybe one two tablespoons and I felt so energized. I went and walked probably 15 miles, 30 kilometers that day. I walked the island around <laughs> several times. I felt like I needed to digest that food. It felt like I, I chewed on, on two pieces of cabbage. Your body becomes so clean. It's amazing how much energy you can get from very little food. And then the next day, I had difficulty feeding. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I had a little emotional spill. I don't know what happened. I started crying. <coughs> I was scared. I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't have that soup. I had a little and I vomited it. And my body just literally shut down. Maybe it was a sign that I needed to continue fasting. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not experienced. I have no one to teach me about 
regular long-term fasting so i'm just discovering everything on my own so but i had this emotional things come out and i was crying for like hours and then uh next thing i thought my body it just came to me because i kept trying to eat the soup and i couldn't and then something an idea occurred to me and i said i'm gonna go and buy baby food this is not the best thing to do but that's what worked for me i went and bought something called serelac i don't know if you know what it is it's cereal for babies it's like a, a mushy thing i grew up eating that and my body i thought i would be able to eat that went to the store i bought it it's terrible it has terrible things in it <laughs> but seems that my microbiome needed that because my bacteria did not want the boiled um the boiled uh, uh cabbage or the meat uh the first day yes the second day i didn't want that and also i didn't want any fruit i was looking at fruit and it was not attractive to me the only thing my brain was thinking of is baby food so i went and bought serilac and i mixed one tablespoon with almost a quarter of a liter of water and boiled it really well and i was able to eat two three tablespoons and i walked forever and that's when all of a sudden it seemed like my microbiome that digests carbohydrates was dying after 33 days and it didn't want to die because it's dangerous if you lose all the bacteria that digest sugar and you live in a society that <laughs> is based on sugar and carbs you are in in trouble because it did happen to me when i did the ketogenic diet once i stopped eating all carbs i did only greens and stuff and my body when when i ate the piece of uh, bread one one time i almost died it was horrible so i i felt i was gonna die but maybe i didn't i didn't i wasn't gonna die it just felt terrible terrible i was sick so i did that and it allowed my stomach something inside of me fed itself and it became a lot uh, i became a lot more receptive to food after that i had cravings for the soup and the meat and i ate the soup with the meat after 33 days of no food and nothing i was able to chew but i chewed that meat probably a hundred times before i swallowed it and every bite of meat's little tiny piece of meat I would eat with it a, a, a big piece of cabbage. So that third day or fourth day, my stomach opened up and I was able to eat the soup. Not a lot, maybe one cup of soup. And then the next day, the same thing, one more cup. Uh, the day and the night mixed each other. So I wasn't, I was waking up in the middle of the night with hunger. So I wake up, so like, it doesn't really matter. You start feeding every four hours, five hours, you get a little hunger and your body wants to eat. I think after fasting 33 days, maybe the body doesn't want to eat anymore and then we're forcing it to eat. Maybe we're supposed to eat once a week, but because we think we can go from fasting to eating, that's what happens. So, uh, what else? Revelations. You get a lot of revelations while you're fasting. You start contemplating the sun. You start contemplating the sky, the ocean. You start contemplating the waves and you get understanding of where it's something bizarre. It's hard to explain because there are no words for this, but you start understanding what is earth. You start seeing clear. You don't need to read in a book. Oh, the clouds are formations of evaporated water. You don't need to read that. Oh, the sun is this much distance from the earth and it will die one day. You don't need all that. That's information that you read. I don't know where people got that information from, but you start having a certainty of the earth. What is it? How was it formed? Uh, why we're here? This is the beauty of fasting. You'll be shocked and amazed and surprised how clear, and there is no doubt about the information that comes into you. I don't know where it comes from. Some religious people will say from God. Some others, uh, atheists will say from yourself. Uh, every, everyone will say wherever it comes from, wherever they believe in. I believe this is universal knowledge that will come upon everyone that seeks 
purifying the body because the more pure you are, the more the uh, universal understanding comes in you. That's why I love fasting because I have a lot of questions about why I'm here, how did we get here, who, you know, these big questions that a lot of people answer through religion and faith, but uh, my curiosity wants to answer it in a different way and fasting does that for me. Not that I'm not religious, not that I don't believe in God. I have a very beautiful, uh, balanced religious life that um, is a mix of spiritual and religion. <clears throat> so, uh, other than that, I think I forgot a lot of things. And I'm pretty sure that once you read the book, you're going to read a lot of other stuff that I haven't mentioned here. The, let me see, bad smell black tar mm, revelations nature we talked about a lot of things but there's a lot more to read because this is nothing compared to what i have written i also wrote reflections um and things that i understood that i didn't know before i wrote about day by day how i felt day by day so you can see what, what compare with your own fast. Uh, I encourage you to, uh, if you are a healthy person, to look into water fasting, try water fasting. I wanna make a video about people that, about my advice for people that never fasted. And I hope it helps uh, people out there that I have never fasted. Uh, modern medicine and uh, our society is given a bad reputation to water fasting, they advise. I just saw an article. My goodness, I hope it's recording. I saw a lot of uh, information from uh, L Magazine, Spain L Magazine, saying that there's the most dangerous modern hype is water fasting. Don't believe that. Go with your instinct. Try water fasting for yourself. Do just one day, 24 hours. It's very easy, it's not dangerous. If you're taking medications, that's when you need to consult with your healthcare provider. And I think this is a beautiful journey that I wish a lot of people will look into it and try it. Please ask me questions, send me emails. Again, this is only for educational purposes. And uh, I think my 30, oh, I have, to make a video about what happened in my body after the fast. By the way, I have to say just one thing about that. After the water fast, everything remained the same for two, three months, and then all of a sudden, boom, all the changes at once. So don't think that thing happened immediately, the changes in your system. All of a sudden, after two, three, four months, my body switched and my tasting food switch because uh, coming out of the fast you feel hunger and you crave everything but then as you start eating and feeding your body starts uh, staying away from the bad foods there are things i can't eat anymore my body doesn't want to eat them and there are things that if i eat i get so much gas like my bacteria doesn't want to digest it and it just expulses it uh, as, as 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 air in my in my stomach so I'm learning more and more about myself. This is a wonderful thing. I hope everybody will try water fasting. Uh, please write me your comments. Uh, give me your opinion. Uh, share with me your experience. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to publish my book really soon. If you have any advice for publishers, translators, and editors, I welcome those. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Please subscribe to my channel. And I hope I covered most of the, your, your, your questions. And uh, I'm going to do a Spanish version of this video. I hope I can go through everything as well. Thank you guys for watching. Guys and girls, I love you. Bye.